won the right to rest peacefully in Texas water. Howdy and hello, I'm Travis, Vice President of Ship Operations, Battleship Texas Foundation. Uh, this is our August 2021 update. Uh, this is our first update for the month of August. We're gonna drop another one in two weeks. Uh, previously, our updates had all been textual on Facebook, on uh, Instagram, and on our website. So this one, we decided to change the pace. If you guys like it, we'll keep doing it on this way. Um, or we might mix it up, or we might just stick with the plain old textual stuff. There's um, not a lot to report as far as the shipyard goes and, and that kind of stuff. We'll get into that a little bit later. And then, um, but we're mostly gonna talk about the things that have been happening, you know, really in the past two weeks on the, on the ship and the stuff that's been, we've been accomplishing. Um, there's a lot of stuff that you haven't seen so far. Um, we're gonna try to show you a little bit of what's going on. There's not a lot of action shots, but mostly just kind of showing you what, what we've been doing. So we know the hot question on everyone's mind is when the ship's leaving for repairs and where's the ship going for those, for those critical repairs. Uh, as of right now, the, the ship is leaving between uh, January and April of, um, of 2022. That's next year. That's pretty much right around the corner um, for, for those repairs. Um, we are working with a shipyard in Galveston who is in the process of acquiring a dry dock. Uh, that's part of what the, the, the delay going on is. Um, they're moving through that process. Um, and uh, we, uh, once they have that dock acquired, then we will be going down there for those repairs. So that's why we have a bit of a wide window there for, the, uh, um, for, the, for the, when the ship is leaving. Um, now, once we are fully under contract with that, with that shipyard, we will announce who and then we ha will have a better idea of the when, so we should be able to narrow it down. And, uh, you know, as another burning question that people have is like, you know, hey, when can we, can we watch the ship leave and when, when she goes out? We're working on that one. We're working with our partners with the Texas Historical Commission and uh, Texas Parks and Wildlife Department uh, to, to see what we can do to facilitate that. Um, and, um, and we're also looking at some alternative viewing sites along the ship channel with municipalities along the ship channel to um, to make sure that folks get the widest viewing uh, options as possible of the ship as she goes uh, down the ship channel. While we're waiting to leave for the shipyard, um, we're working here at NRG, uh, but despite working here, we're not um, having abandoned the ship. Uh, we are at the ship uh, every day doing odds and ends, um, basically in a, in a shipkeeper role. Uh, making sure that the um, uh, water, any water intrusion is being pumped out. Uh, we do have a little bit of, of, of water that is leaking into the uh, tankage of the ship. Um, you know, we went from, if you've seen in our previous updates, uh, we went from um, around 2,000 gallons a minute that was coming onto the ship and we were pumping over the side uh, this time last year to around, you know, 10 gallons a minute, that's a rough average, but use, it's a dramatic difference. And to put that in context, think of that as two five gallon buckets versus in, in a minute compared to uh, you know the average backyard swimming pool in a minute. So um, it's a, a big volume reduction. Since our crew is not having to maintain pumps and do that kind of thing, again, we're shifted over here. We are monitoring the ship, making sure that, that she's doing what she needs to do and uh, uh, as, we, as we get ready for the shipyard. So despite you know, our crew keeping things in a, in, a, in a caretaker mode, we've started a partnership with um, the uh, um, Surge Main Houston, which is a uh, Naval Reserve unit uh, that's based out of uh, Joint Base Ellington. Um, they are, they're gonna come out once a month and um, do a project for us on the ship. Um, the project that they've adopted is the uh, pilot house, uh, chart house, bridge radio, and um, uh, captain's emergency cabin. Um, they're going to go through and address uh, all the deficiencies in that space, which, you know, corrosion on the deck, uh, wipe everything down, repaint it, and then we're going to start to try to finish that space out uh, with uh, and restore that space out as it had been um, in the past. Um, the space was restored in the early 2000s um, with the best information that uh, the st uh, staff and volunteers had available at the time since we've had 20 years of uh, more research and more understanding of what that space looked like. Um, we'll do an update, a video on that, talking about that project and what that space was and the evolution of that space. So uh, so more to come on that. So the, the 
this past weekend we had um, uh, a contingent of our regular volunteers and uh, out at the ship on Saturday. Uh, they and uh, the surge main unit uh, were, were out and they're helping us get ready for uh, Labor Day weekend because back by popular demand we are reopening um, the ship Labor Day weekend. Uh, we got a lot of positive feedback um, <clears throat> from, from um, July 4th weekend. Um, so we're reopening the ship Labor Day weekend and there is a potential that we will reopen the ship uh, uh, around uh, December 7th, uh, the weekend, <clears throat> I think before December 7th. So uh, more details to follow on that. And uh, you know, obviously we want to open the ship up every day, normal business, but the ship's just not in the condition to do that because of the preparations that have been needed for the shipyard. Uh, and you wouldn't get the, the best experience possible uh, as you would uh, you know, when, when we reopen. So one of the projects that we've been working on um, and really hard over the last uh, really six weeks or so has been restoring the, uh, the 20 millimeter guns. Uh, the basic process that we're following is, is we disassemble each mount, uh, we disassemble the gun, break it down into its, its base components. Uh, these guns are very difficult to get apart because they've seen absolutely no love since, since 1948, uh, outside of a little bit of light sandblasting and then just having paint schlocked on them, um, which is good. It's, it's helped preserve them, but it's not preserved them very well, particularly their internal bits. Um, the, the basic process, that, again, that we use is, is we'll, we'll remove the paint, do a light sandblast to put a profile on things, and then it'll get parkerized. Uh, it becomes really interesting when we get to bits like this, which is 20 millimeter mount number two. So this is the forward most uh, uh, 20, millimeter, 20 millimeter part on, uh, mount on the uh, uh, port side. And this is a barrel spring case. So this is the forward most uh, part of the uh, recoil spring on the, on the gun. In fact, the recoil spring would be in this piece right here and it goes backwards. So it's really hard to get the, uh, the rust and residual paint out of here without a lot of scraping and um, 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 you know, chemical strippers and things like that. We can do it. Chemical stripper doesn't really do well with rust. So there's the inside of that. Um, and then, um, so we use a process called electrolysis, uh, which is this lovely tank here of, um, sitting next to me. Um, electrolysis is, uh, is chemistry dark magic. And, um, but, but the essential process of it is, is that uh, we use, we pump electricity into a piece of steel that then causes, again, dark magic to uh, make the rust and paint release from the, from the steel. It's very effective. It works really well. Um, as you can see from this piece here, which I pulled out this morning, it has a little bit of like light surface rust on it from earlier today, just a little bit of staining. Um, and uh, if you look at the inside, it's all nice and clean outside of, there's no heavy scaling, there's no paint, anything like that. All that's, all that's fallen loose. So the um, spring casing, once it's done, it'll get a, a, a light blasting and, um, and, and ready for parkerization. It'll get parkerized. And then once it comes out of the parkerizing, it will look like this. This is a freshly parkerized um, um, uh, breech bar from um, one of the gun mounts, number eight. Um, and it, um, it looked just as rough as the, the barrel casing. And now it looks like this. It looks almost like a brand new part. So uh, once we get done, um, once we get the gun race, and we'll, again, everything will get a light coat of paint and then we'll move on. Uh, also, I want to point out that the other, one of the other things that we do besides the um, electrochemistry dark magic is, the, um, is we use evapor rust. So um, it, it, it attacks a different form of uh, rust and it's a, kind of the one-two punch that we use on some of these hard to reach places. So generally we soak the guns in evapor rust before uh, uh, we start trying to break them down. Um, we don't use uh, electrolysis on the, um, on the gun barrels because they contain chromium and running electrolysis on chromium will release um, hexavalent chromium, which is a very, very carcinogenic substance, very nasty. So we don't do that. And um, that's why we use evapor rust to, before we try to get the guns apart. One of the projects we've been working on it has been the conservation of the ship's propeller. Uh, 
if you uh, came to the ship in, um, well, at any time um, in, in, in the past, the, the propeller has been sitting on the ground um, next to the flagpole at, at, at the, in the park. Um, through the generosity of Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, we are getting the propeller conserved. Uh, this has been a major undertaking. I know we've posted on our YouTube, we posted video videos of it being, um, or a video of it being rotated as we've picked it up, turned it over so that the underside could be conserved. And then right now it's sitting right side up. <clears throat> and uh, we're going to, this work will finish out by the end of the month, um, late this month, but probably early next month, we're gonna shoot a video on kind of on that whole process. We'll have an interview with our uh, conservator uh, and um, go a little bit more in, into that detail in the history of this propeller, including when it was put on the ship. So no guesses, we'll tell you in that when that happened and actually how old this propeller is. So if you notice, the propeller is partly, the blades are covered with plastic uh, and the hub has uh, some rags stuffed in the, uh, some bolt holes, uh, that's because we have a little bit of work left to do on it outside of the main conservation. Uh, the thing's going to get, um, parts of it are going to get blasted. So this part here will get blasted and the interior of the hub will, with a mild uh, abrasive. And then um, the hardware pockets here, so these big bolts actually hold the, uh, the uh, propeller blade onto the ship, or onto the ship, onto the propeller, onto the hub here. Um, all that's going to get blasted out. This is actually marine growth, so from when the propeller was still on the ship. So uh, it's dried, fossilized, dead marine growth. So that'll all get cleaned out and then that'll be properly uh, 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 preserved. If you can hear the creaking noise, it's the tent. It's windy and this tent's kind of gotten beat up all summer. So it's it's ready to, for a break. So speaking of magic tricks, ta-da! So the other project we've been working on has been the um, uh, conserving the 1895 battleship Texas is Bell. So the 1895 Texas was the United States' very first steel battleship, um, and it was named after the state. So Texas Parks and Wildlife hired us to uh, conserve the Bell. We subcontracted that out, contracted that out to On Aim Conservation. Zach and his team have done a fantastic job not only on the Bell but also the propeller. Um, this is the cap from the propeller, so underneath here would have been the hardware that affixed the uh, um, um, propeller to the propeller shaft. So um, those guys have been doing a fantastic job. The cap, they just started on, um, on getting it clean, so it's a little dull right now, but it'll look shiny and it'll look just as good as the, uh, the bell. Uh, Onaim also did the bell that's for this battleship, to, or for our battleship, Texas. Uh, which is at the Lone Star Flight Museum. So thank you for watching. Um, this has been our, you know, our, our August 2021 update. Um, if you like this, we're gonna, we'll keep knocking them out. Um, keep, follow our YouTube page, um, subscribe to it. Of course, we're gonna post it on Facebook and all that stuff as well when we drop them. We will be dropping a video again at the end of the month on the propeller. Uh, our next video that'll drop next week is gonna be um, about the, um, it's gonna be bum dope. And we, we're going to have a whole series on bum dope. So if you're not savvy with Navy lingo, bum dope is a Navy phrase for bad information. So, um, so we're going to be talking about all the, the myths and stuff and all the rumor and innuendo and stuff that we hear surrounding the ship as far as, you know, is this ship going to Alabama? It's permanently going to Alabama. No, 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 no. Um, so we'll talk about all that stuff. And then, you know, if you've heard something that you think is untrue, post it in the comments and we'll, we'll address it. And, um, and we'll go from there. Um, again, if you could, please follow our Instagram and our, again, our YouTube, our Twitter, and then our Facebook feed. And then uh, that will keep you up to date. And you can also go to battleshiptexas.org to see um, our updates there. Visit our online store where you can buy your very own Battleship Texas ball cap. So yes, this is a little different from the normal ones that you've seen. Um, this is, um, you know, the standard ship silhouette here. But prior to 1920, Battleship Texas, I'm sorry, prior to 1922, Battleship Texas was known as Battleship Number 35. So in 1922, the Navy introduced the uh, whole designation system, the, the BB for battleships, CA for heavy cruisers, CL, CV, that kind of thing that we know today. Um, so we decided to create a unique hat with the 1914 silhouette here and then the old 
Battleship number 35 designation. So uh, thank you guys again. Uh, give us some feedback and uh, hope, hope you enjoyed. Y'all have a good now.